We apologize for the reposting of this video, but many of our earlier Naruto videos were edited in a style that received copyright claims, resulting in sections of the videos being removed. In order to maintain the quality of the channel and to have full versions of the videos uploaded, we will be re-editing them in a style that complies with Naruto's copyright policy. So with that being said, we will be reposting characters we've already covered throughout the next few weeks, with plenty of new ones mixed in as well. Thank you for understanding, and please enjoy the video. This video was made in collaboration with Narutopedia. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Gara from Naruto Gara is a shinobi of Tsunagakure. He was made the Jinchuriki of the one-tailed Shukaku before he was born, causing the villagers of Suna to fear him as a monster. With nobody to connect to, Gara grew up hating the world and looking out only for himself, giving his life meaning by killing anyone he came across. After being defeated by Naruto Uzumaki, a Jinchuriki like himself who found strength in friendships, Gara starts emulating him. He becomes Suna's fifth Kazakage so he can protect the village and all those who live there, dispelling the fears he cast on the villagers. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Gara. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Background Because of heavy cuts to Tsunagakure's budget, the fourth Kazakage wanted to make one of his children the Jinchuriki of the one-tailed Shukaku to serve as a weapon for the village. His first two children, Tamari and then Kankuro, had not been compatible with Shukaku. Rasa's third child, who would become Gara, was compatible, and for that reason Shukaku was sealed into him by Chiyo while he was still in his mother's womb. Gara ended up being born prematurely, and from the ordeals of childbirth, his mother, Karura, died. Before dying, she looked lovingly at Gara's small form and vowed to always protect him. Gara was raised in isolation during his early life, taught ninjutsu by his father, and cared for by his maternal uncle, Yashimaru. When he was allowed to roam around the village, Gara would try and connect with the villagers, being kind to them and offering them any assistance he could. However, being a Jinchuriki made the villagers frightened of Gara. Adults avoided him, and when they couldn't, treated him delicately while children would run from him on sight. Gara would try to assure that he meant no harm, but in the process would inadvertently injure or even kill them with his sand. Gara did not understand this pain he caused others because his sand protected him from all injury. When he was six years old, Gara asked Yashimaru to explain pain to him. From Yashimaru's explanation, Gara believed he did know pain, the unbearable agony in his heart. From this, Yashimaru elaborated that physical pain, what causes one to bleed, could be cured with medicine and time, whereas pain of the heart, like Gara experienced, could only be cured with love. Gara, said Yashimaru, received love every day from both his mother, whose spirit controlled the sand that protected him, and from Yashimaru himself. Gara was pleased by this and went out into the village to show some love to those he'd harmed, but his efforts were met with only fear and hate. Gara was dismayed and went off to try and understand why he was treated as such a monster. While doing so, he was attacked by one of Suna's Anbu, whom he fatally wounded with his sand. When he unmasked the Anbu, Gara discovered that it was Yashimaru. Gara was devastated that Yashimaru, the only living person to love him, would try to kill him and ask for an explanation. Yashimaru replied that it was a mission given to him by Rasa, Gara's father. It had been decided by the Suna Council that Gara was a failed experiment that, if allowed to live, would only continue to do harm to the village and its people. Gara tried to find solace in the fact that Yashimaru had been ordered to kill him, but Yashimaru insisted, lying to Gara that he volunteered that he'd always hated Gara for causing Karura's death. Karura had not loved Gara either, and named him after the phrase a self-loving carnage, so that he would be a curse upon Suna for what it had done to her. With his explanation done, Yashimaru asked Gara to please die before blowing himself up with explosive tags. Gara's sand, a product of Shukaku rather than Karura if Yashimaru's words were to be believed, shielded Gara from the blast. Having lost everything he cared for, Gara decided that he would from that point forward live up to his namesake by loving only himself. To that end, he used his sand to etch the kanji for love onto the left side of his forehead. Overwhelmed with grief, Gara transformed into Shukaku and attacked Suna, which Rasa stopped with his gold dust. Rasa would arrange five other assassination attempts on Gara over the following years, all of which Gara evidently survived. 
Due to his singular focus on himself, Gaara eventually learned to rein in his powers and became the lethal weapon of destruction Suna wanted him to be, prompting Rasa to stop trying to kill him and instead find a use for him. Chunin Exams Gaara and his siblings are teamed together under Baki's leadership and sent to Konohagakure to participate in the Chunin Exams. Shortly after arriving, Kankuro nearly starts fighting Team 7, forcing Gaara to threaten to kill him if he doesn't leave them alone. Sasuke Uchiha is impressed by Gaara and asks his name. Gaara is impressed by Sasuke and asks the same of him. After they exchange names, Gaara and his siblings depart. During the first stage of the Chunin exams, Gaara uses his third eye to copy the answers from other participants' written tests. The proctor, Ibiki Morino, though he notices that Gaara must be cheating, can't actually tell what he's doing, and therefore is deeply impressed. Because neither he nor his siblings are caught cheating, they advance to the second stage. For the second stage, Gaara and his siblings enter the Forest of Death with the task of collecting a set of two scrolls, one of which they are given and the other of which they must take from another team. They encounter Team Shigure first, and despite not knowing which scroll they have, Gaara insists on fighting them. He quickly kills Shigure with his Sand Waterfall Funeral, prompting his teammates to surrender their scroll in exchange for their lives. Gaara kills them too, and makes to also kill the members of Team 8 who are secretly watching. Despite Gaara's threats to kill them if they interfere, Kankuro and Tamari convince him to desist and they leave Team 8 unharmed. They ultimately reach the center of the forest with the two scrolls they need in a record-breaking 1 hour and 37 minutes. Moreover, Gaara doesn't get so much as a speck of dust on his clothes, something the proctors remark is nearly impossible even for more experienced ninja. In the preliminary rounds, Gaara is matched against Rock Lee. Though Lee is quite fast, Gaara's Shield of Sand is faster and blocks all of Lee's attacks. With encouragement from his instructor, Might Guy, Lee removes the ankle weights he wears, therefore making him faster than the Shield of Sand and allowing him to hit Gaara, the first person to ever do so. Lee lands several additional blows, causing Gaara's armor of sand to start chipping away, exposing an excited expression beneath. With Guy's permission, Lee attacks Gaara with Front Lotus, but during a brief spasm of pain, Gaara is able to escape and attack Lee with his sand. Lee fends off the attack and counters with his strongest move, Reverse Lotus. Due to the speed of the Reverse Lotus, Gaara loses his shield of sand and parts of his armor of sand are broken away. However, he is able to use his sand gourd as a cushion for the attack, therefore avoiding any noticeable damage. Lee, however, has difficulty moving afterwards and is left at Gaara's mercy, who uses his sand to crush Lee's arm and leg. Guy intervenes, and from seeing Guy's concern for Lee, an emotion Gaara doesn't understand, Gaara opts to leave Lee alone. Gaara is declared winner, and after the preliminaries conclude, he is informed that his first opponent in the finals taking place in a month will be Sasuke Uchiha. That night, Gaara is attacked by Dosu Kinuta, another finalist who wants to kill Sasuke himself. Gaara briefly transforms into Shukaku and kills Dosu. During the following month, Gaara and his siblings are informed of Suna and Oto Gakure's plans for an invasion of Konoha, set to begin during the Chunin exam's final matches. Once the invasion starts, Gaara is to transform into Shukaku and attack the village from within while Suna and Oto's forces invade. The day before the finals, Gaara tracks down Lee at the Konoha hospital and attempts to kill him. He is found and stopped by Shikamaru Nara and Naruto Uzumaki. Gaara isn't intimidated by their superior numbers and threatens to kill them too, explaining that it is by killing others, particularly those who are strong, that he asserts his own existence. He briefly explains his past and how he came to arrive at that motivation for living, which convinces Naruto that they can't beat Gaara. Guy interrupts them before a fight can break out, and Gaara is forced to withdraw. Gaara is eager to fight Sasuke, having noticed that Sasuke, like himself, is driven by hate and who may therefore be the greatest challenge Gaara has ever faced. By killing Sasuke, Gaara's reason for living would be indisputable. However, Sasuke does not show up for their match on time, and when he does finally arrive, Gaara is on edge. Midori and Shiba intercept Gaara as he heads down to the arena to face Sasuke and ask him to take a fall in the fight. Gaara kills them without warning, briefly slaking his bloodlust. His fight with Sasuke starts, and Gaara is surprised to find Sasuke's speed and movements are almost identical to Lee's, and as such bypasses defenses in much the same way. Gaara surrounds himself with sand so that Sasuke's punches and kicks can't disturb him as he prepares to transform into Shukaku. However, Sasuke pierces through the sand with his Chidori, injuring Gaara's arm. 
Gara is frightened to see his own blood for the first time and cancels the transformation. Konoha Crush. Gara is so unnerved by his injury that he is unable to participate as planned in the invasion of Konoha when it begins in the middle of his fight with Sasuke. Baki instructs Tamari and Kankoro to take him back to Suna. As they carry Gara away, they are confronted by Sasuke who wants to finish their fight. Kankoro tries to delay him, but this fails when Sasuke catches up with them again. Gara flings Tamari away so she won't interfere. Gara transforms his right arm into Shukaku's, who has been causing Gara ongoing discomfort because of the earlier cancelled transformation. When Sasuke is able to counter Gara's increased strength and speed with another Chidori, Gara manifests Shukaku's tail. Sasuke counters this too, but is left unable to move afterwards. Gara is stopped from killing Sasuke by the arrival of Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto doesn't recognize Gara at first, but when he does, he attempts to retreat. Gara goes after Sasuke again, but is blocked by Sakura Haruno, who reminds Gara of Yashimaru. Startled by this, Gara binds her to a tree with his sand. Because Naruto can't break Sakura free, he decides to stay and fight so that he can save her and Sasuke. Gara advances his transformation yet again and attacks with Sand Shuriken, hoping to draw out the same surprising power that Naruto displayed during his earlier match in the finals. Naruto endures several rounds of attacks and even tries attacking Gara's untransformed quarters with 1000 years of death, but is ultimately forced to tap into his power source to create hundreds of shadow clones. The clone's onslaught surprises and overwhelms him, forcing him to fully transform into Shukaku. Gara tries to kill Naruto with Sand Waterfall Funeral, which Naruto escapes by summoning Gamabunta. Gamabunta uses his sword to cut off one of his transformation's arms, exciting Gara. Because of how strong Naruto has proven to be, Gara puts himself to sleep to transfer full control of his body to Shukaku. After prolonged fighting, Gamabunta is able to get Naruto close enough to punch Gara and wake him up, suppressing Shukaku. Gara forces Naruto away with his sand, but Naruto quickly strikes again. Gara is able to restrain Naruto's arms and legs, but Naruto is able to headbutt him, doing enough damage to force the release of the Shukaku transformation. Both Gara and Naruto are exhausted from the fight, but have enough energy for one last exchange. They leap at each other, and Naruto punches Gara again, claiming victory. Naruto and Gara fall to the ground, unable to move. Gara can't comprehend how Naruto can be so strong, and is troubled by what this loss means for his existence. When Naruto starts crawling towards him, Gara screams at him to stay away. Naruto, however, only sympathizes with Gara, having had a childhood that was just as lonely as his was. However, Naruto is able to find friends like Sasuke and Sakura, and for their companionship he will do anything to protect them, even if that means he has to kill Gara. Gara is amazed that Naruto's strength derives from his love for his friends and admits defeat. Tamari and Kankuro collect him and start carrying him home. Along the way, Gara apologizes to them. Sasuke Recovery Mission After the invasion of Konoha ends in failure, Konoha and Suna become allies, both having been wronged by Orochimaru. As a sign of this alliance, Konoha later requests Suna's help in stopping Sasuke from defecting to Orochimaru. Suna sends Gara and his siblings to help the Sasuke recovery team in their fights with the Sound 4. Gara arrives to save Rock Lee from Kimimaro. On arrival, Gara remarks that Lee is slower than when they last met, which Lee indicates to be because the injuries he received from Gara were very severe. Gara feels guilty about this and insists on fighting Kimimaro by himself so that Lee doesn't risk further injury. After blocking several of Kimimaro's attacks, Gara catches him with his sand and uses Sand Waterfall Funeral on him. Through a combination of his Shiko Sumyaku abilities and his Cursed Seal of Earth, Kimimaru is able to survive the Sand Waterfall Funeral. Gara therefore increases the scale, blanketing Kimimaru and the surrounding area with sand and then using Sand Waterfall Imperial Funeral. Kimimaru survives yet again, this time by advancing his Cursed Seal to its second level. The transformation allows him to outpace Gara's sand and restrain Gara with his spine. He then prepares to attack with Dance of the Clematis, Flower, which Gara blocks with his shield of Shukaku. Gara congratulates Kimimaru for his performance and states his regrets that someone so talented is about to die. Kimimaru states his willingness to give his life if it's in service to Orochimaru. Gara decides Kimimaru has been brainwashed and uses his sand to drag him deep underground. As he's pulled down, Kimimaro uses his Dance of the Seedling Fern, forcing Gara to use Desert Suspension to get himself and Lee out of harm's way. When they start discussing their apparent victory, Kimimaro emerges behind them and insists that he's not brainwashed. Kimimaro dies of a pre-existing illness before he can land an attack. 
Afterwards, Gara muses that Kimimaro was somewhat similar to Naruto in that both would stop at nothing to protect what was precious to them, even if that precious thing was itself evil. Gara escorts Lee back to Konoha, and once all members of the Sasuke recovery team are safely accounted for, he returns to Suno with Tamari and Kankuro. Sunagakure Support Mission In the anime, Gara and his siblings volunteer to teach at Suna's new Konoha-inspired ninja academy. Most of the academy students still fear Gara and avoid him during their lesson on ninja weaponry. Matsuri, however, is curious about him and asks to train with him. Gara senses her fear of weapons and violence and so instructs her in how to use a Joyo, a relatively non-lethal weapon. Matsuri and Gara get along well, prompting the four celestial symbols men to kidnap her in order to get to him. Suna requests Konoha's help in rescuing her, for which the entire Konoha 11 is sent. Gara first fights Suiko, then he attacks the four celestial symbols men's leader, Hoki, but is captured. To escape, Gara does a partial Shukaku transformation, which in the process revives Seimei. Gara stops the transformation and later destroys Seimei's armor with a spear of Shukaku and kills him with a sand waterfall imperial funeral. He goes to Konoha to rest, and once he's recovered, returns to Suna with his siblings and Matsuri. Interlude At some point over the next two years, Gara becomes Suna's fifth Kazakage. His reason for pursuing the office is twofold to show the villagers that he's no longer the fearsome weapon he once was, and so that by protecting the entire village he can gain the same kind of strength as Naruto. In the anime, Gara does away with several antiquated policies, such as one that bars anyone who can't use ninjutsu or genjutsu from entering the academy. This allows Shira, who excels in taijutsu, to become a Suna nin. Shira later trains Gara in taijutsu. In Naruto's footsteps, the friends' paths. About two years after the end of part one, the fifth Hokage proposes that their villages hold a Chunin exam. Publicly, the exam will demonstrate the alliance that now exists between their two villages. Secretly, the exam will hopefully draw out Akatsuki, who are after Jinchuriki like Gara. Gara agrees, believing that this will also be a good way for him to prove himself to his dissenters in Suna. Kankuro makes repeated attempts to convince Gara not to put himself at risk like this, but Gara insists it's the best way for him to unify with Suna's population. Gara presides over the start of the second stage of the exams held in Suna's demon desert. When he later receives reports that two Jonin from Takigakure are participating in the exams, Gara observes them with his third eye. It is quickly discovered by Fu, the third member of the Taki team, who Gara realizes is also a Jinchuriki. During the second stage, sandstorms start rampaging across the demon desert. Gara secretly gets away from his guards to go into the desert to rescue Team Matsuri. When he locates them, he finds that they are also being helped by Fu, who reminds Gara of Naruto. As soon as they escape the sandstorm, Gara is attacked by Hoichi, who uses a Fuinjutsu chain to try and extract Shukaku from his body. Fu tries to help him, only to have her own tailed beast also start being extracted. Matsuri is able to locate Neji Hyuga, who stops the extractions by blocking Gara's and Fu's Tenketsu. This also caused the Fuinjutsu chains to turn on Hoichi, so Gara asks that Neji save him as well. Gara then thanks Neji and Matsuri for their help. Gara deduces that Fugi was behind Hoichi's attack and contacts him, asking that, no matter what opinion he may have on Gara, that he not do anything in the future to harm Gara's friends. Fugi is surprised by this response as well as Gara's forgiveness for his actions. Due to the attack on himself and Fu, Gara cancels the Chunin exams before the second stage ends. He informs the remaining participants that reports on their performance will be sent to their superiors, who will then decide if they're to be promoted. Kazakage Rescue Mission Two and a half years after the end of part one, the Suna Council discusses reports from Jiraiya of Konoha about Akatsuki's likely imminent activity. Because Akatsuki will undoubtedly come after Gara because of the one-tailed Shukaku sealed within him, Suna places its borders under heavy guard. While working in his office later, Gara looks out the window and sees a non-native bird flying in the sky. Guessing that it's an intruder, Gara confronts the bird's rider, Deidara of the Akatsuki. Gara attacks Deidara with the sand surrounding Suna and at the same time uses his personal supply of sand to defend against Deidara's explosive clay. Gara uses his personal sand to crush Deidara's left arm, prompting him to drop his C3 on Suna. Gara defends the village with his air sand protective wall and narrowly blocks another set of Deidara's C1 explosives. As he regroups within his shield of sand, he discovers that Deidara has managed to sneak some explosives into his personal supply of sand, which detonates at point blank range. Before he loses consciousness, Gara moves the sand he's been using during the fight away from Suna that it won't fall on the villagers. 
Daedara captures him and takes him back to an Akatsuki lair, where for three days Akatsuki's members extract Shukaku from Gara's body. As the extraction nears completion, Gara sees a lonely vision of himself that he's increasingly unable to recognize. Gara dies when Shukaku is removed from his body. Naruto and his team are able to retrieve him from Akatsuki, but they can't revive him conventionally. Chiyo trades her life for Gara's, her way of apologizing for sealing Shukaku into Gara in the first place. As life returns to him, Gara sees a vision of himself, once alone and unknowable, befriended by Naruto. He wakes up to find himself not only surrounded by Naruto and his team, but also his siblings and the dozens of other Tsunanin that have been tirelessly trying to find and rescue him. When he learns what Chiyo did for him, Gara forces himself to stand and requests that everyone pray for her. They attend Chiyo's funeral a few days later, and before Naruto and his team leaves, Gara uses his sand to shake Naruto's hand in place of saying goodbye. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha. In the anime, Gara receives a report that Konoha has been destroyed during an Akatsuki attack. Gara is confident they'll be able to rebuild since they have Naruto, and recalls when Team 7 helped him deal with the Suna assassin captain. Five Kage Summit. The fourth Raikage calls for a Kage Summit to discuss Akatsuki's recent activity. On receiving the summons, Gara travels to the Land of Iron with Tamari and Kankoro as his bodyguards. Once the Kage are all together, Gara opens the proceedings by discussing his own experiences with Akatsuki and his previous efforts to collaborate with the other Kage, efforts that only the fifth Hokage helped with. The other Kage offer their own excuses for why they didn't help, but the fourth Raikage's accusation that the current Kage and their predecessors employed Akatsuki stands out. Gara is disgusted by the news, which the third Tsuchikage argues he can't understand simply because he's too young. Zetsu interrupts the summit with news that Sasuke Uchiha, who has been collaborating with Akatsuki, has infiltrated the summit. The fourth Raikage goes off to find Sasuke, and the other Kage bicker while he's gone. Gara becomes pessimistic that the Kage will be able to work together since his peers seem too willing to give up, qualities that he, because of Naruto's influence, cannot respect. Gara leaves to meet with Sasuke, arriving in time to stop him and the Raikage from injuring each other too badly. While the Raikage's wounds are treated, Gara speaks with Sasuke, remarking that he possesses the same hate that drove him the last time they met. Gara uses his own experience with hate to advise Sasuke to turn back while he still can, as no good can come from his present actions. Sasuke refuses. Saddened by Sasuke's response, Gara joins Tamari, Kankuro, and Darui in attacking him. Sasuke uses Susano to defend himself and destroy the room to cover his escape. Gara uses his sand to protect the others, and they pursue Sasuke back to the summit room, arriving in time to see him teleported to safety by Tobi, the leader of Akatsuki. Tobi explains his Eye of the Moon plan to those in attendance, and requests that the Kage surrender Naruto and Killer B for him to complete the plan. Gara and the other Kage refuse, prompting Tobi to declare the start of the Fourth Shinobi World War before departing. The Kage agree to form an allied shinobi forces, and although they want Konoha to join, the Kage do not trust the 6th Hokage candidate and will require somebody else to represent Konoha. Gara recommends Kakashi Hatake, who the other Kage agree with. After the Kage disperse, Gara locates Kakashi elsewhere in the Land of Iron and finds Naruto in his company. Gara tells them all what happened at the summit, including what Sasuke did. Gara emphasizes to Naruto that the approaching war will be fought to defend him, and that if Sasuke chooses to side with Akatsuki, Gara will fight him in order to keep Naruto safe. He states his opinion that Sasuke can no longer be saved from himself, and that if Naruto truly wants to be Hokage someday, he will need to accept the same conclusion. However, before leaving, he also advises that Naruto at least figures out for himself what can be done for Sasuke. Gara, Tamari, and Kankuro return to Suna, and when they arrive, they're informed that the Daimyo have already authorized the Allied Shinobi Forces formation. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown. Gara travels to Kumogakure to meet with the other heads of the Alliance and discuss tactics. When the Tsuchikage asks where the Jinchuriki will be hidden, the fifth Hokage argues against this. However, Gara reminds her that Naruto takes too many risks for his friends to be allowed to fight. Akatsuki later finds Naruto and B on the Island Turtle, and Gara volunteers to go there to provide additional security, but the Kage decide to send the Tsuchikage instead. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation Gara is made commander of the Allied Shinobi Forces 4th Division, as well as the commander-in-chief of all the other combat divisions. When some of the Shinobi from different villages start fighting over past grudges, Gara uses his sand to break them up. He then delivers a speech to the assembled forces, asking that they set aside the factors that once set them apart and focus on what unifies them now, stopping Akatsuki. The allies are inspired by his words and mobilize for battle. Gara leads his 4th division to the border of the Land of Lightning. 
There, Gara scatters his sand sensing around the area so he can detect any approach by Akatsuki's forces. This ends up exposing a reincarnated Mu, causing the reincarnated second Mizukage, third Raikage, and Gara's father, Rasa, to be sent to reinforce Mu. Seeing them with his third eye, Gara calls for backup. The third Suchikage is sent to provide assistance, but they avoid combat until the second day of the war. Once they're ready, Gara launches the first attack with his sand, which Rasa counters with his gold dust. When Rasa sees Gara, he is surprised to find that Gara has not transformed into Shukaku, having assumed this because of the amount of sand he was controlling. Gara informs him that Shukaku was removed from his body, but that his life was saved by the many friends he had made in his capacity as Kazakage. He adds that, as Kazakage, he now understands all of Rasa's attempts to assassinate him and forgives him. Rasa finds this all very strange and asks that Gara fight him so he can see how Gara has grown. After several exchanges, Gara surrounds Rasa and the other Kage with sand, which takes the form of Gara's mother, Karura. Gara is surprised to see his mother. Rasa, accepting defeat, explains that the sand that has always protected him was not Shukaku's doing, but rather his mother's, because she loved Gara from the moment he was born. He confesses that he forced Yashimaru to try and kill Gara all those years ago and to lie to him about his mother in order to test Gara's emotional suitability as a Jinchuriki. Gara cries at the news, and Rasa apologizes for not being as good a parent to Gara as his mother was. Gara places ceiling tags on the Kage's sand confinements, but all but Rasa escape. Gara then assists the Suchikage in his fight with Mu, using his sand to locate him whenever he turns invisible. One of Naruto's shadow clones eventually joins the battle and with Gara's help is able to briefly incapacitate Mu, allowing Gara to seal him before he can speak. Gara angrily questions Naruto about his presence on the battlefield and his new Ninetales chakra mode, but Naruto assures him that he knows what he's doing and he should not treat him like a child just because he's Kazakage. While Naruto's shadow clone goes off to fight the third Raikage, Gara and the Suchikage face the second Mizukage. The Mizukage berates them for fighting Mu before fighting him, telling them that he's the stronger opponent and therefore should have been dealt with first. When the Mizukage is repeatedly able to neutralize his sand, Gara admits this is apparently true. Because the Mizukage is protected by a Genjutsu, Gara uses his sand to locate the giant clam casting it so that the Suchikage can destroy it. The Mizukage immediately attacks the Suchikage, forcing Gara to save him with a sand clone. Gara then tries to capture the Mizukage with his desert-layered Imperial Funeral, which the Mizukage escapes from by using an explosive clone. Gara is able to capture the Mizukage in his sand again, but the clone keeps interrupting before the seal can be completed. Although the Mizukage has repeatedly given them pointers about how to defeat him, he decides not to help them defeat the clone, believing they now need to prove themselves. Gara uses his sand to protect the 4th Division from the clone's attacks, and then tries to attack the clone with his sand, but the clone's too fast. In order to slow it down, Gara secretly adds some of Rasa's gold dust to his sand, which, when heated up by the clone's body, acts as the perfect restraint. Naruto's shadow clone, having defeated the third Raikage, comes to join Gara and the Mizukage. Seeing them both, remarks they make a good pair. Gara seals the Mizukage away and reports their victory to Allied headquarters. Fourth Shinobi World War Climax. The 4th Division is confronted by a half of Mu, who is now accompanied by the reincarnated Madara Uchiha. Madara starts attacking the 4th Division, and Gara, the Suchikage, and Naruto's Shadow Clone team up against him. Their combination is effective enough to force Madara to activate his Rinnegan, which he then uses to drop a meteorite upon the 4th Division. Gara orders the 4th Division to evacuate, and uses his sand to help the Suchikage stop the meteorite. Madara responds by dropping a meteorite, which they're not able to stop. Gara's sand protects him from serious injury, but the Suchikage and the rest of the 4th Division are badly hurt. Naruto's shadow clone tries facing Madara alone, but the prolonged fighting has left it exhausted. Gara and the Suchikage join him, as do the other three Kage, having all teleported to the battle to help him. The fifth Hokage heals Gara, and the Suchikage and the five Kage team up against Madara. Convinced they can defeat him, they tell Naruto's shadow clone to entrust Madara to them and go defeat Tobi elsewhere. Although they outnumber Madara, the Kage struggle against him. Gara uses Desert Suspension to keep the Kage out of range of Madara's attacks, and Desert Layered Imperial Funeral whenever the opportunity to try and seal Madara presents itself. Their attacks consistently fail, and Madara, in order to make things fair, creates 25 wood clones, 5 for each of the Kage to fight. The wood clones each use Susano and fight the Kage into the night. Despite the superior forces against them, the Kage are able to combine forces against the original Madara, impressing him enough to use Susano's complete body form. 
before he can use it to destroy the Kage, the impure world reincarnation is released and Madara's soul starts returning to the pure land. Madara removes the impure world reincarnation's user's control over himself, thus allowing him to stay. Now free to do what he wants, Madara decides he's lost interest in the Kage and states his intentions to go after Naruto. The Kage try and stop him and thus fulfill their promise to Naruto, but Madara defeats them and leaves them all near death. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki Orochimaru and members of Taka eventually locate the Hokage, and by helping her heal herself, she is able to heal the other Kage. Once they've recovered, Gara uses his sand to transport the Kage to where the allied forces are fighting. Katsuyu informs him of what's been happening up until now. On arrival, the Kage rally the surviving forces against the recreation of the God Tree. After Naruto is able to destabilize the Tailed Beast's chakras sealed within Tobi, Gara latches onto Shukaku's chakra and pulls it free. With Obito defeated, the allied forces head off to fight Madara, the only remaining threat. Gara requests that Shukaku help him seal Madara. Shukaku is uninterested and Gara suggests that he'll ask another tailed beast, at which point Shukaku does decide to help. Gara and Shukaku attack Madara with wind release, sand buckshot, slowing his movement so that the other tailed beasts can attack him. Once he's down, Gara and Shukaku combine efforts to create a bigger and stronger desert layered imperial funeral which Madara escapes using his Susano. Madara returns once he obtains one of his Rinnegan and starts sealing the tailed beasts into the demonic statue of the Outer Path. Gara tries to prevent Shukaku from being sealed using Desert Hand, his way of thanking Shukaku for enabling him to meet Naruto all those years ago. Madara attacks him in order to stop him, which Shukaku blocks so as to preserve its title as Gara's absolute defense. Despite Gara's efforts, the tailed beasts, including those sealed in B and Naruto, are successfully sealed. In its final moments, the Nine Tails within Naruto communicates to Gara how to save Naruto's life. Have the Nine Tails chakra sealed within the reincarnated Minato Namikaze transferred to Naruto. Gara starts carrying Naruto to Minato, but his life is rapidly fading. Gara takes him to the fifth Hokage so she can provide medical assistance, but she sends Sakura Haruno instead. While Sakura performs emergency life support on Naruto, Gara carries them to Minato, and on finding him, tells him what the Ninetales told him. Minato starts sealing his half of the Ninetales into Naruto, but it is intercepted by Black Zetsu, and they are shortly afterwards joined by Madara, who is now the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. Gara and Minato team up to try and stop Black Zetsu from giving the Ninetales to Madara, but they are easily repelled. Through the combined efforts of Kakashi Harake and Obito Uchiha, the Ninetales chakra is reclaimed and Naruto is gotten to safety. Might Guy then joins the fight against Madara and ultimately decides to use the Eight Gates released formation. Because Guy only has a limited amount of time, Gara helps Kakashi create an opening in Madara's defenses by carrying him closer so that he can use Kamui on some of Madara's truth-seeking balls. Guy is able to successfully attack Madara, but Madara survives and Guy is unable to keep fighting. When Naruto and Sasuke Uchiha join the battle, Gara carries Guy to safety so that he isn't harmed in the crossfire. Kaguya Otsutsuki strikes. Despite Naruto and Sasuke's efforts, they are unable to stop Madara from casting the infinite Tsukiyomi, trapping the world in a dream. Gara dreams that he has a happy childhood in Suna with his parents, siblings, and Yashimaru, and where he gets to play with Naruto every day. Naruto and Sasuke eventually release the infinite Tsukiyomi, freeing Gara and the rest of the world, and thus ending the fourth Shinobi World War. In the anime, Gara and A travel to Konoha on the day of Kakashi's inauguration and thank Naruto for his efforts during the war. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky Over a year after the end of the Fourth Shinobi World War, Kaio is made the new Warden of the Blood Prison. Gara and the other Kage visit the Blood Prison to interview her and see if she is suitable for the responsibilities. They approve of her after she humiliates the Fourth Raikage in a fight. Shikamaru Hiden, A Cloud Drifting in Silent Darkness Two years after the end of the Fourth Shinobi World War, Gara notices that Tamari is bothered about something and guesses that it has something to do with Shikamaru Nara. She confides her concerns about Shikamaru's recent behavior, which has been cold and distant. They both assume that he's on some mission for Konoha and that it is to be kept a secret. Although Gara would be ordinarily content to leave it at that, he remarks that Shikamaru is too important to the Shinobi Union's future and thus gives Tamari any resource she requires to find out what Shikamaru is up to. After visiting Konoha, Tamari learns that Shikamaru has gone missing during a mission in the Land of Silence. Gara and a force of Suna-nin join her and going to rescue him. When they arrive after several days of travel, Gara instructs his men not to kill any of the Land of Silence's enlightened ones if they can avoid it, although there are some injuries nobody is killed. 
Shikamaru thanks Gara for his help afterwards, and Gara once again insists that it was all in the Shinobi Union's best interests to do so. However, Gara promptly returns to Suna with all of his men, except for Tamari, leaving her behind to talk to Shikamaru. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the fourth Shinobi World War, Gara attends an emergency Five Kage summit to discuss the imminent crashing of the moon. A few days after returning to Suna, meteors start falling on the village, and Gara uses his sand to protect the villagers. With the crisis becoming dire, the Kage contact each other and decide that the moon must be destroyed. When the sixth Hokage later reports that Naruto is on the moon, Gara and the other Kage decide to delay the moon's destruction to give Naruto a chance to save them. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love riding upon a spring breeze. Gara is informed by his Anbu that a man fitting Sasuke Uchiha's description has been meeting with a terrorist cell near Suna. When the Anbu are about to raid the compound, Gara accompanies them and observes the man with his third eye. His appearance and chakra signature are identical to Sasuke's, but the man speaks of wanting to destroy Konoha, which Gara does not believe Sasuke would do. He and his Anbu attack the compound, but the lookalike escapes. Gara tells all of this to Sakura Harano and Ino Yamanaka while they visit Suna a few days later. Like them, he believes that the man was not really Sasuke. In order to prevent unsubstantiated rumors from spreading, Gara then asks that they tell the sixth Hokage about this. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. Gara, Tamari, and Kankuro travel to Konoha to participate in the Kage Summit. Upon arriving in the village, Gara wonders what to give Naruto for a wedding gift. After the meeting, the three return to Suna. Ten days later, the sixth Hokage visits the village and requests that Suna Shinobi guard Konoha on the day of the wedding, to which Gara agrees. Six days later, Gara and his siblings return to Konoha to partake in Naruto and Hinata Hyuga's wedding. Gara Hiden, a sandstorm mirage. Gara has a routine meeting with the Suna Council and reports recent events in and relating to the village before then allowing the council to make requests of him. Normally, their requests are minor and petty, and for that reason Gara is surprised when the councilors request that he get married. Because Tamari is about to get married to Shikamaru Nara of Konoha, her children will be Konoha Nin. If Gara and Kankuro should die before producing heirs, that would mean that a Konoha ninja will have claimed the Kazakage position. To avoid this, the council wants Gara to find a wife so that he, in turn, can have children. The council insists that their interest in seeing Gara married is more of a recompense for turning him into a Jinchuriki years ago than it is a political matter. Unable to argue out of the situation, Gara accepts whatever marriage the council decides to arrange for him. Tamari helps Gara dress for the occasion, and Kankuro advises him on being sociable, giving him a rare opportunity to spend with his brother and sister. Under heavy security, Gara meets the woman the Suna Council has found for him to marry, Hakuto of the Hoki family. His first impression of her is that she is beautiful, something that embarrasses him once he realizes that she is to be his wife. Having forgotten all the etiquette lessons Tamari gave him, Gara decides to try and emulate Naruto's successes from being unoriginal. They discuss their hobbies. Hakuto is intrigued to hear Gara speak with passion about raising cacti, and it dispels some of the rumors she heard from his days as Gara of the Sand Waterfall. She therefore declares that Gara is kind. Gara is pleased, filled with the same happiness he experiences when he tends to his cacti. Gara and Hakuto are attacked during their meeting. Gara is able to kill their initial attackers and keep Hakuto safe, but struggles against the attacker's leaders, twin brothers Etoro and Metoro Konjiki. The brothers simultaneously attack with their Keke Genkai and break Gara's shield of sand, injuring him for the first time in several years. Although he has several opportunities for escape, he refuses to do so because it would require leaving Hakuto behind. He does not wish to protect her because she is to be his wife, but rather because she's a person in need. Hakuto's sister and bodyguard, Shijima, soon arrives and creates an opening for Gara to kill both Itoro and Mitoro. With the fighting done, Hakuto treats Gara's injury before heading back to her family home. Afterwards, Baki suggests the attack was part of some plot to eliminate Gara, who plays politics behind closed doors, and replace him with Kankuro, who leads from the front lines and is much loved by the standard infantry. While they later receive reports that Hakuto had been kidnapped, they realize that she was the target of the attack, not Gara. Gara leaves in the night to rescue Hakuto by himself, not wanting help from anyone, as that would only draw attention to the mission and allow his detractors to use her kidnapping against him. As he leaves, he is met by Shijima, who was easily defeated by Hakuto's kidnapper and now wants to help in retrieving her. They travel through the desert, tracking the footsteps that, despite the kidnapper's attempts to conceal them, Gara is able to follow. When they catch up, the kidnapper introduces himself as one of Hakuto's clansmen, Shigazane. Shigazane quickly defeats Shijima and then starts attacking Gara, using his many water jutsu to convert the area into quicksand. 
Gara could escape if he wanted to, but he does not believe he could locate Shijima in time to save her if he did. For that reason, he goes to her and wraps them both in sand as they sink under. Gara wakes up after several hours in the underground cavern that Shigazane drew his water from. Shijima asks Gara why he, the Kazakage, would risk his life to protect her. He replies that all life is precious regardless of one's station, something he learned from Naruto. He knows there are times when sacrifice is necessary, but he tries to avoid that as much as he can. Shijima understands, and when they're ready, leads Gara out of the cavern. Gara and Shijima find Hakuto and Shigazane as they're about to enter the Land of Fire. Gara has long since figured out that they are lovers who plan to use Hakuto's arranged marriage as an opportunity to elope. He is not upset by this, as he never intended to force Hakuto to marry him, but at the same time, he, the Kazakage, can't let them abandon Suna. He asks them to return, but Shigazane refuses and attacks Gara. Gara uses his magnet release to defend himself, counter, and hold Shigazane at his mercy. Shijima threatens Gara to let Shigazane go. Gara is already aware that she helped him stage Hakuto's kidnapping, but he repeats that he can't let them abandon Suna. When Shijima proves willing to kill Gara and herself so that Hakuto and Shigazane can escape, Gara asks why she didn't kill him earlier while he was unconscious. She replies that it was not her way, which satisfies Gara. Gara attacks with a sand sword, but rather than strike Shijima, he hits Metoro, who faked his death earlier and had been following them so that he could take his revenge. Despite his attempts to conceal himself, Gara had been aware of his presence the whole time. After confirming that Metoro was hired by Tojuro, a member of the Suna Council who Kankoro and Baki are already in the process of arresting, Gara kills him with his sand waterfall funeral. Gara points out how effective the sand waterfall funeral is at eliminating all traces of Metoro and once more repeats that he can't let Hakuto and Shigazane abandon Suna. Hearing this, Shijima realizes that Gara plans to fake their deaths so that they can be together. At that moment, Shikamaru Nara appears, his help having been requested by Gara via Tamari. Shikamaru will corroborate reports that Shigazane and Hakuto were killed so they can settle in Konoha under new identities. Gara and Shijima return to Suna, Shijima vowing her service to the Kazakage. New Era In the following years, Gara continued to remain close with Naruto, even getting to know his children, Boruto and Himawari, who came to view him as an uncle. At some point, Gara discovered Shinki, who was unable to control his power. Frightened, the child attacked Gara, leading to him being impaled while hugging Shinki. Shocked at Gara's approach, Shinki calmed down, leading to the Kazakage offering to teach the boy how to use his power. Following the encounter, Gara adopted Shinki. After Naruto's Hokage inauguration, the two were photographed together in their Kage attire by Genzo. Sometime later, Gara, accompanied by Konkuro, attended a Kage summit in Konoha, where Sasuke shared his concerns that a threat greater than Kageya Otsutsuki was still lurking somewhere. Gara shared the other Kage's belief that this should be kept a secret to avoid panic. Sarada Uchiha Arc Fifteen years after the Shinobi World War, Gara and Kankuro traveled to Konoha to participate in another Kage Summit. Versus Momoshiki Arc In the anime, Gara saw Kankuro and Shinki's Genin team off as they departed for Konoha by Thunder Train to participate in the Chunin exams. Immediately afterwards, he is contacted by Shukaku, who informs him that it has suddenly lost contact with Gyuki. Questioning if it was only with Gyuki, Shukaku confirmed that its connection with the other tailed beasts and Naruto were still intact. Having been warned, Gara told Shukaku he was grateful before the connection ended. Later, on his way to the exams, he was attacked by Urashiki Otsutsuki, who recognized Gara as the former Jinchuriki for Shukaku. The man then attacked Gara, easily piercing through Gara's sand defense to strike him and steal some of his chakra before disappearing. Once arriving at Konoha, he told Sasuke and Shojuro about the incident, prompting a speed up for the deciphering of Kaguya's scroll Sasuke took from one of her palaces. Later, Gara and the other Kage observed the final round matches of the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha. When Kinshiki and Momoshiki Otsutsuki started attacking the stadium, Gara helped the other Kage defend the spectators and get them to safety. In the anime, Gara noticed Urashiki from before and pursued him along Chojuro. While he left most of his sand to support the following arena and Chojuro was void of his Mist Swordsman blade, the two managed to pressure Urashiki. As Urashiki began revealing copied techniques like Gara's sand manipulation, Gara and Chojuro managed to capture him in a trap, only for Urashiki to reveal his Rinnegan and escape. Kinshiki and Momoshiki kidnapped Naruto, so Gara joined the other Kage, Sasuke, and Naruto's son, Boruto, in rescuing him. On Momoshiki's planet, they freed Naruto and teamed up against Momoshiki. Although they briefly defeat him, Momoshiki was able to recover and immobilize the Kage with a stolen shadow imitation technique. Boruto was ultimately able to defeat Momoshiki, allowing everyone to return to Konoha. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc 
In the anime, as Konohagakure recovered from the attack, a Kage summit was held to discuss how to handle the still looming threat of the Otsutsuki. Later, Gara attended Onoki's funeral. One Tail Escort Arc In the anime, Gara was aiding Sasuke in his mission when they were attacked by Urashiki, controlling several puppets that he stole from Toneri Otsutsuki. When Boruto came, Urashiki began to target him. He didn't manage to hit Boruto due to Sasuke's intervention, but managed to cast Sasuke in his fishing rod to steal some of his chakra before sending him to another dimension. As Gara's attention was split between protecting Boruto and facing the foe, Urashiki found an opening to steal more chakra from Gara, only to be thwarted by Shinki's intervention. Shukaku arrived to aid its former host, and the two were able to temporarily steal away the foe. Afterwards, it was to safeguard Shukaku at Konoha. While Gara returned to Suna to tend to his wounds, Shukaku was accompanied by Konkuro, Shinki, and Boruto Uzumaki. Also during which, to make sure Urashiki would not sense its chakra, Shukaku willingly sealed itself inside a kettle. He was then escorted back to the village for treatment by Yodo and Araya. Five days later, Gara recovered and was relieved to learn that Shinki, Boruto, and Shukaku all successfully made it to Konohagakure along with knowing that Sasuke's return prompted Urashiki to retreat. When collecting Shinki, asking what he learned from going with Boruto, the son simply said Boruto is a slave to his emotions. Gara, however, smiled at seeing that Boruto's influence did spark a change in Shinki. Shikamaru Shinden, a cloud dancing in forlorn falling petals. Gara and Kankuro attended a Kage summit in Konoha at the Hokage building, during which the Kage bickered about topics concerning Konoha, leading to Kurotsuchi demanding Konoha to disclose all of its confidential information as the village is proof to peace by the next summit, and said Iwagakure would leave the five great shinobi country alliance if they didn't. Afterwards, the summit ended. Kawaki Arc When Team 7 found a mysterious boy with connections to Kara, Naruto called forth a Kage summit with Kankuro joining Gara as his bodyguard. As talks about the boy's fate began, Gara voiced his personal feelings of not treating the boy as a weapon, having personally experienced that dread as a Jinchuriki. It was then unanimously decided to treat the boy with sympathy and for the boy to live with Naruto, who would then watch over him at all times. Did you enjoy our video? Make sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.